Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I am your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we ventured to Brandon, Manitoba, amidst the buzz of the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Amidst the vibrant energy of the event, we seized the opportunity to engage with local leaders hailing from across the province. Now, we delve into the pressing issues confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments in Manitoba. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Mayor Earl Funk of Steinbeck, Manitoba. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Mayor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciated. I want to start by asking you a simple question, but an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Earl? Well, that's a very good question. See, in, in uh, 2005, I've always been in the meat business, and me and my wife started a like a mom paw meat shop down right in on Main Street. And you know, it it should have actually just been a, a bar because I actually instead of a butcher. I became a bartender for many people, and they would come in. They would they would voice their concerns, or they would just talk about this is what's going on in Steinbeck. And we all knew because we could, we, we, we got it on on Steinbeck online on our local media station, and also in the paper. And so through that, I guess you you just get this sense of of service for your community, right? And and you you start to love the community. You start to to recognize the issues, and you. And you know what? That grew a, a, um, just a sense of wanting to to serve, right, and help. Uh, also, my, my dad was always very politically charged. Uh, for the most part, when someone ran for mayor or a council, he was their sign guy, so he was putting signs up all the time. Uh, I'd help him build signs as well. So I I grew up in that culture of of. Uh, um, Did you ever just, want to be on the sign? Actually, yes, I did. Oh, like it's, it was it was a time when there was there was someone running for for mayor, and he was my dad's friend, and the t- the conversations they had in the garage as my dad and I were building signs, it just made me man, this would be so cool to to know these things and to actually factor change in the community, right? And so, but I mean, I was twelve years old, so it, it didn't it didn't really resonate that much, right? Um, <clears throat> but it was later on after uh, in 2010 there was a, a re-election and there was um a, our library there was there was a lot of it was a contentious issue the library expansion uh and it was going well over around the 2.8 3 million dollar and there were lots of people opposed to that kind of money being spent and so um, a lot of people came in you should run you should run you know, and because I did have some ideas for a library. And so we so I got to uh, I, I put my name in and you know how it works. Like I, I asked counselor, the first six get elected. Yep. Well, I came in third. So it was it was a pretty good showing for the very first time. So so we, we felt we had the public support and and we just continued to go and to continue. And then uh, in 2018, no, 20, 20, 2014, ran again. I came in first. Oh, wow. the councillors, and so then when, when 2018 election came along and our mayor decided to uh, to not not run, to step down, I decided to to run, and uh, we were I, I won by about 500 votes. There were three people running, I ran by about 500 votes, and then in 2022 I was I was claimed. So there were two mayors acclaimed in Manitoba in 2022, me and Brandon Burley from uh, the the city of Mor- of Morden. Oh wow! Yeah, so. so- Okay, you could have chosen many different paths to go down politically. 
what specifically was it the municipal route that drew you to it? Because being politically active and being politically active at a young age, you could have you could have gone down many paths, provincial, federal, but at the end of the day, you looked and you saw that municipal aura a little bit and you decided to go towards it. What was it about the municipality that you said, okay, best way for Earl to give back, to have a voice, is to serve on council? Yes, because these are my people. Like you, 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 The further you get away from from municipal government the further you get away from the people yeah right and so i'm i we're right beside the people we're right with them i I, every morning i show up to our to our meat shop and i'm i'm on main street one of the first guys on main street every morning and and i'm easy to approach and i i have interaction with my people every day and that's what i love about it if i was in the mla in the in the legislature I wouldn't have interaction with people every day from our, my community. Or if I was MP and you're and you and you're gone for four or five days out of the week, you you cannot you cannot connect with your people. And I love to connect on an everyday basis with my people because it's just it's important to me to connect, to hear what they're thinking, to think, to see what they want to have in our community. So we talked a little bit off the the recording prior to the hitting the record button about uh, sort of the, the 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 presence of media in your community, but I want to talk about apathy within the residents for a little bit, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. I have noticed, and this is a painting a broad stroke across Canada, not just in Manitoba, that the average resident is tuning out of what's going on at City Hall. You won't find, like 20 years ago when I was covering municipal politics as a reporter, I would see at least five, 10 people in the council chambers. Now it's hard pressed to find at least one or two. In Steinbeck, do you feel like people are engaged enough of what's going on at City Hall so that way when you do ask for their opinion, they're informed enough that they can give you an informed uh, opinion on what is challenges you're facing? You know what, I can sum it up, yes, but I will explain it too. Um, like when we have our town town hall meetings or or we, have, we we're looking for people to consult to when we're when we're looking at our OCP or official community plan. Yeah. You know, we'll have we'll have forty to sixty people come out for something like that. You know wow. and, and uh, we've got a group in our community strong towns and they're always holding our feet to the flame as far as um, density, there where the um, regional pathways that kind of stuff uh, active transportation there and so i do feel yes that people definitely are in tune with what's going on some some aren't but then if we have a very good media support like i said they're they're at every meeting and so when when so if a group comes to us they they get a news story they get featured on our on the on the um the in the paper and also on our uh, media uh Social media, uh, not social, but digital media. Yep. And and um, everyone gets to read that. And and one, what I would say is, is our community, they go to the paper. They go to, we're a little old school, but they also go to Stomach Online to find out what's going on. Yeah. Right. And so um, I think it's very important to work with the media to have them there, and it's important for us to have transparency. Like one thing I'll say, and one one is one of the things that our policy is. Public business needs to be done in public, right? And so we we have, uh, I mean, I can count on one hand the, the in-camera meetings we go. There's only three things, legal, land, and labor. That's it. Otherwise, everything else is done publicly. Yep. And we stand by that. And it's very important. Transparency and communication has been a priority of our of our council but for isn't decades. isn't it not a double-edged sword, though? Because I, as someone who worked in the municipality who was communications, I know you can communicate till you're blue in the face, but there's always going to be those people who say, I didn't get it. I yeah. didn't hear about it. So how do you ensure that you are making the best decisions at council for everyone, knowing that not everyone's going to potentially have an opinion because they weren't informed because you can only go as far as you possibly can residents need to go at least 10 percent of the way to ensure that they're informed as well how do you ensure that you are making the best decisions that are going to impact the people as a whole rather than just a few select group of people you know you're correct but we try to do on majority so that what we hear the majority of is what we what we work on and i and i and you know what we you know I, i would say sorry to people that did not hear yeah. 
but it's not because the, the the message wasn't there. If they if they were either gone or they weren't paying attention, or because the message is out there, we make sure it's there, and that's all I can do. Like yeah. at the end of the day, we can only go so far. Uh, you know, we can't. Uh, you can't go along and and put it in front of. You can give the access, but you can't put it in front of their faces necessarily. I appreciate that. I want to turn to the city as, of Steinbeck as a whole now for a bit. And I do, before I do this, as I always do on the show, I'm going to preface it by saying this is a conversation between the mayor and myself, the not a motion of council, not a direction of council, not a policy of council. This is your opinion. It may line up, but it's your opinion nonetheless, because you are one vote on yeah, council. Yeah. In your opinion, what is the biggest challenge or challenges facing the city of Steinbeck today as of re- us, our, us chatting? You know, it, it's it's actually, it's a good problem, but it's a, it's a problem of, of growth. We're growing in, in the double digits. Oh, really? Yeah, since 2016, we've been growing in the double digits. And so that is having a huge, uh, or putting huge stress and pressure on the infrastructure, right? And and um, and just um, having employees and all those things. We will be immigrating over 1,000 people this year to our community. The, uh, through through Eastman Immigration, right, and and their settlement services, uh, so finding finding uh, uh, staff for your businesses, uh, places to live. Like ne- we we had a we, we were getting to a place where we were having almost a shortage of homes. Like we had, I think, like 20, 20 to forty lots. Uh, luckily, now we've had two big developers come in, open up some land, and we've got six hundred building lots right now. Oh wow! So, so we're good for a, for a while, but but those are going like. They're, they're being picked up, and people are building, right? And there's just growth. Every corner of our community is experiencing growth at this time. There's something building everywhere. Okay, so yeah. that brings up a lot of questions, but I think I need to ask two but important ones. How do you manage growth in the economy that we have today? Because people are struggling. The only way that municipalities get revenue, property taxes. You can't do a lot of the infrastructure growth that you need to keep up with that growth that is coming to your community without doing it on the backs of the people who are here. How do you do that? How do you balance the needs of the community's growth with the needs of the individual's reality? Good question, but in, like infrastructure renewal has always been a high priority of our community, of our council. So we've our our infrastructure is in very good place. In, okay, in very good shape. Okay, you know we did we we do uh, we we have an industrial park. Uh, two last year we we built a road, a half mile road, uh, and we we pushed it through, um, and we hard surfaced it. Did the did the did the um, sewer and water. That subdivided a bunch of lots for us. In three months, they were sold or we had deals on them, closing deals on them. Oh, wow. That's how fast it's growing. So when you look at that, there's always dollars turning. And our reserve levels, we've, we've, we've always been very diligent at maintaining reserves. And so now, like, for example, we're building a, a $70 million event center. It's 691 Five. Everyone's building a event yeah. centers in yeah. Manitoba these well, days. Well, we're needing them because if you look at our community, our, our, our country, we we've got winter <laughs> eight months of the year, <laughs> right? So we need we need to have a place where people can meet inside, right? Yeah. But but anyways, this will be the hub of the community. We put it downtown where our infrastructure was, so we saved money on that, and we are um, it's we're going to be into it for about thirty two million dollars, but the debenture on it is 7.5 yeah. we're only going simple because we we put to a mill 0.25 that we committed in in 2010 2012 to to an, a new event center so we put that in reserve for 10 years and now we can use that reserve to build this to build this facility and that has been on, that guys. has been that has been the 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 what we've done that's our that's our program that's our policy we save money we put in reserve, and when 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 it's time for the project, or when the when the money's there, we pull the trigger and we do the project, so that we limit our our borrowing. Another thing we've done is we've changed all our borrowing to five year term. So when you have a five year term, so you stagger your you stagger your projects every year. Yep. So that every year you add another renewal project because you're you're canceling debt every year every now in in the five. Because we're well into five years of this, you cancel the next 
debt term. So you can always start a new infrastructure project. Good asset management, if you ask yeah. me. So that's that's how we're doing it. And this started in the late 80s when the interest rate was, was 18, 20. The council of that day said, we got to go to five-year term because we can save millions of dollars on the interest rate. Because it was a lower interest rate when you rent when you borrow money for five years. Yeah. And most much of our borrowing over the last decade has been, I mean, aside from now, but has been at around uh, 2.3, 2.7%. So that's really, really helped us. And even now, we're under 5% on most of our projects that, we, that we're taking the ventures on because we're at that 5% five-year payback, right? There's not a lot of risk, right, for the, for the, for the lending institution, right? Does the average resident understand that, though? Well, we've How talked— How do you explain to people that without explaining people that they feel like they're being talked down to? Because when you talk about nickels and dime, when you talk about interest rates— People are struggling, though, Mm -hmm. and they're seeing, okay, I understand that you're borrowing money at a lower rate, but that's still being borrowed on the backs of me because that's my money you're borrowing against. And right now, I'm struggling paycheck to paycheck. Is is it hard to look at the future when people are struggling now, or do you just sort of have to focus in on what's going on in Steinbeck and look at the future as a whole? Well, that's a good question, too, but we've always been mindful of the rate payer. And since uh, 2017 is the last time we've had a tax increase until this year. Th- this year we've had to just – inflation has just killed us. So we do – we have a 5% increase this year. But from 2017 to now, our mill rate has ma- ma- uh, maintained and stayed the same at 137 Okay. Okay. So we've kept the mill rate for all those years. And so we've always, and sometimes, you know, you have to defer a project for a year or two, but you don't, you don't say, no, we're not doing it. We say, we're going to do it next year. Yeah. Right. So that we don't get behind on that infrastructure. I, you know, we go, the challenge is we go to other communities in our, in in our, in our province and and we just go, oh, the roads are so bumpy here. We're not used to that. Because like, we invest a lot of money in our roads, and uh, we you've, we've got that uh, gas tax. Yep. So the, the gas community t- building fund. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what they changed. They it called to. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what we do is we take that tax money because that is it's, it's kind of a windfall, right? Because it's, it's based on per, per capita. Yeah. And we take that and we'll do a project where we do uh, uh, road overlay. So we'll take off two inches of of asphalt add another two inches of asphalt where it's fairly cracked but not potted yet but cracked and then what we find is it it protects that road like you 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 end up getting another 20 years out of that road because you have not damaged the the base the packing the base plus it it's amazing how it protects the infrastructure that's in the right of way so your 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 gas lines, your your uh, sewer lines, your water lines, they all last longer because they're not affected by the by the by the the ground or the surface precipitation that's leaking in, right? So yeah. we found that to be huge. And you know, it was it was kind of neat because when Minister Jim Carr was still alive, I had a few conversations on the phone with him, and and he he was uh, given the task of finding out what the prairies is doing with their gas tax. When I told him that, he said, can you write a media release for me that I can take to Ottawa? He said, that was, he said, that is just, that is so neat how you're saving your infrastructure. And through that, we are saving our community millions and millions of dollars over 20 years, right? Oh, wow. So I want to flip to my last segment. And it's an important one because I'm coming to Steinbeck later on in August. As I've said to everyone, I'm doing a big tour of through Manitoba in August with an RV and seven dogs in tow. Okay. So what are some tourist destinations that I should be stopping in Steinbeck while I'm there? Well, we've got our MHV, the uh, the Mennonite Heritage Museum. Ooh, okay. Like, that's really yep. good. And they're growing every like growing every year, and they got new programs all the time. Uh, I guess another another great thing would be the event center we're building. And when you do come, come see me. Yeah, of course. Oh, I'm grabbing a coffee with you of for course, sure. Earl's Meat Market's always good to go. <laughs> Best farmer sausage in the area. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> you know, that's always that's always a hit. We we get a lot of people as they come through. They stop in at the store and they'll tell us where they're from, and then we get a story. Right? I have oh, a funny story. A guy from Al- Albertsford came in. If you got a minute for that, yep. so he came in. 
and he's been buying sausage for us for for a long time. This is a few years ago, and all of a sudden he comes in one time and he says, "Earl," and he's got this he's got this candy dish and this pig with a with a bowl through it and a nut on the bottom, and he says, "There's a so a pig a, a ceramic pig on this ca- silver candy dish." And he gives it to me, and he says, that trophy, I won in Abbotsford, and that's your trophy. <laughs> and, and then he explains the story. He says, there were three of us, and the, they're all men from church, right? And they, they all have their favorite butcher. And so they were going to have a fundraiser, a progi dinner fundraiser. And they, they said, well, where are we going to get the farmer's sausage? So the one guy says, no, it has to be Remples in, in Abbotsford. The other guy said it had to be this, a place in Saskatchewan he just got back from. And then he said, no, 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 no. I've had all the sausages you've had. You have to have it from Earl's. And he says, I just came back a couple months ago, and I've got a whole bunch in my freezer. So they figured they couldn't agree. So they figured, we're going we're gonna to have all three, and we're going to have a taste test. So when, when they, basically they got a colored chip yep. when they picked up their meal, and, or the sausage, and they were all numbered or colored, boom, boom. And then they had to put them in a box, in the, the chip in the box, and the color had to match, I guess, the color match the box. But uh, apparently we got, like, Earl's Meat Market got the most chips, most colors. So he said, that's the story. This is your trophy. You should have it in your place. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so final question for yeah. you. And it's the million-dollar one because I think every municipal leader knows how to answer, but let's put it on the record for a bit. Okay. What makes the city of Steinbach such a unique place to live? to work and to raise a family well you know i think one thing that that council has always done we've always tried to have a good infrastructure you know good quality roads and low taxes and i think that does attract people okay but also we've got a community that is really close-knit and very generous and i think that brings people to a, a story and i can only tell you stories that have happened to me right I had, I had a fellow, his name's Monty. He, he, he was in Thompson. He was, I think he was working for uh, one of the train station or train uh, companies. He retired and they wanted to move south. So he had, he had uh, set up interview or viewings in Oak Bank, which is not too far from yeah. us. They came in early. They figured they, they heard about the Steinmeck place. They'd drive through it. Well, he, he got halfway through our main street and he looked at his wife and he says, cancel those showings. We're moving to Steinbach. Oh wow! Get our get our guy to get you some houses to look up in Steinbach because he just loved the city, how clean it was. Like we've got we got a beautification uh, crew, and they 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 plant baskets and they hang them on the on the, the light standards down Main Street. Uh, we have a meridian that runs down Main Street. It's all full of plants and trees and shrubs and flowers every year. We've got uh, um, planters on the corners where. Like, it's just full of flowers and, and again, shrubs and that. So we take a lot of pride in what we do. We actually have a community event every May, the first Saturday of May. We get 2,000 people out to this community event. It's called, it's called the Churches Pick Up and Walks. Organizes, there's about 20 churches that organize it. And so the people come out, they get garbage bags and yellow shirts, and they go through the community, and they clean up all the oh, winter wow. garbage. And... What's happened is that that event's gotten so big that we are sending them to communities that are close to us. That we send them down the highway, we send them to Mitchell, we send them to Blue Brokery, because we we have too many people to do our to our to do our community. It doesn't. And in three hours, when you look at that, twenty-two thousand people, three hours, right? That's sixty six thousand six hundred hours. That would be three and a half, basically full-time people. Cleaning the 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 uh, cleaning the streets and the sidewalks and the boulevards of our community, and it's done by volunteers. That's the kind of people we have in Steinbach. That's why people want to live in Steinbach. Earl, that is probably one of the v- most vibrant pictures I've been painted in that answer. So thank you so much for doing this. Well, thank you. It's Always been- a pleasure. <laughs> We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, the local government at work. 
We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues affecting municipalities. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.